Why did the blind man turn down the job offer? He couldn't see himself doing it. Oh, welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on small business owners who are rising from recession. And our guest this week, well, he is providing mentorship while moving his business forward. This is Small Business Celebration. Join us as we learn from successful business owners and successful business leaders about who they are, from where their business has grown, what they have learned, and where their successful business is going. I am your host, Michael I. Roberts, and we're going to learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Chris Ship, the co-owner of Mentors Moving. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thanks for having me. For visioners who don't know who you are, who are you, and what is it that you do? I'm Chris Ship with Mentors Moving and Storage. We're a locally owned and operated moving and storage company. Uh, we do all sorts of moves from local to long distance, uh, commercial, residential. We also do a ton of storage here in our facility. Uh, but more than that, what we are uh, with the name Mentors is we provide mentorship to aged out foster youth in the community. Uh, we did a study recently where 50% of aged out foster youth end up homeless by the time they're 25 and 70% of the females end up pregnant by the time that they're 21. And we saw a huge need in the community and nationwide for someone to come in and help uh, this arena. And we thought that we'd be a perfect fit. We bring them in and uh, we mentor them. I sit down with them once a month and develop life skills and uh, just give them someone to talk to and, and uh, provide them career opportunities as well here within our company uh, to, to help our future generation. If you're listening to this program, you'll probably hear tape being unrolled. You may hear the beeping and the running of a forklift. And the reason is because we are here in the warehouse of Mentors Moving. And it's great because it's not quite summer yet, so we're not at 107 degrees, so we picked the <laughs> perfect time to do this conversation. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to Chris today is because this company made a major monumental shift just as COVID was starting. What was the original name of this company? So our original name was Smooth Move of our company. We, um, we ended up, what, what actually happened was we bought a company uh, we bought Smooth Move in 2009. It was a very small company, um, didn't have any employees, just the owner and a buddy. Right. Had a truck, and um, he wanted to get out of the industry and move out of state. So we bought it from him, and, and we loved the name. What a great name, right? It's, it's Smooth Move. Smooth Move. <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked well. And, uh, you know, honestly, everyone still calls us Smooth Move and, and recommends us on Facebook uh, via Smooth Move. But we saw a need, uh, like I said earlier, in the community with the mentorship. And um, it came up, we were looking to expand into different markets. We wanted to expand our business. We wanted to do more in the community. And uh, whenever we went to expand outside of California, we realized that the name Smooth Move was trademarked by someone else. Ah, there lies the problem. Yeah, so we had to do a quick pivot. And we've always wanted to give back, like I said. We've always wanted to figure out a way to give back to the community. So uh, my business partner, Jesse, is the one who actually um, did all the research. And we kind of... Um, did a, I don't want to say a knockoff, but we got the idea from Covenant Coffee oh, here, okay. here in town with sure. what they do with the foster youth. And uh, we got a cup of coffee, read the label, it sparked something in Jesse's Hey, mind. I want to do that. Yeah. And he's like, hey, that this is a great need. How can we help as well? Right. So um, there lies the name Mentors. And uh, that was... I was having my uh, my son at the time in the hospital when we made the decision to make that. I was <laughs> my wife was in labor, yeah. and um, I took a phone call, and uh, that's when we decided with our business coach. That's when we decided to make the name change, December two thousand nineteen. So pre COVID, right, but right, right in that line, and then um, yeah, it's 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 been very rewarding for me personally ever since. I have to ask, <clears throat> did you help the previous owner move? 
<laughs> no, I think the previous owner um, had a pickup truck and didn't have much and just loaded it up and uh, moved up to Santa Rosa. And, and kind of irony, he's now our managing partner and our business partner in our Santa Rosa location. Nice. We uh, nice. reconnected about nine years later. Yeah. And um, he wanted to get back into the moving industry. Moving industry is very hard to get out of. Mm. Once you get into it, there's something about it. It just sucks you in. It's like a black hole. So <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he wanted to get back in in uh, 2019. So we partnered with him. And then we have a location in Santa Rosa, California as well. A name of a business is crucial. And unmistakably, the moving industry is white hot right now. There is a lot of business going on. Right. And yet, you have to pick a name that can withstand when business is going well and when business is not going so well. And you need to find something that balances. What was part of the thinking? Yes, we know that the mentor's name was because of the good work that you're doing within the company and in the community. But how did the choice of the name Mentors Movie help you over the long term and keep the name of the business relatable and sustainable even when things aren't going so well? Very good question. Uh, early on, uh, before I got into business, I started a reading program and started reading a bunch of books. Mm -hmm. And everything in there, it says, you know, what are you going to do to differentiate yourself from your competition? Right. Right. Everyone, there, there's a ton of moving companies out there. Everyone probably knows someone that has a pickup truck that can move or a, or a or a trailer that they could help them move. Right. But, but what are you going to do to differentiate yourself? Right. And we feel the mentors brand, not only are we able to give back to the community and help our future generations, like I said earlier, but it's a feel good purchase for uh, the community as well. When they use us, they know that we're providing career opportunities for aged out foster youth. Uh, we actually donate a ton of furniture as well. When they age out and uh, they get their own apartments, we donate furniture to them. We, and if we don't have any furniture to donate, we purchase it for them to, to help them out, right? right. They, when they age out of the foster program and they have to live on their own, they're given a twin mattress. And that's the only thing. Mm. You, you've had a rough upbringing to begin with, and then you move out by yourself with a twin mattress. Right. It's not a, not a very good uh, situation for success. Right. So we donate furniture and help them outfit their, you know, their apartments or whatever it is um, as well. The key to this is emotion. You have landed on a name, chosen a name as it were, right. that has a very positive emotional context or association to it. And I think that is key. Because even if somebody doesn't know what it is that they do, the name by itself, whether they see it on the side of your truck, whether they see it online, they all, they've got a, a warm, fuzzy feeling about who you are. Right. Where are your plans to grow from here? So it's kind of difficult. Like you said earlier, uh, the moving market's red hot right now. Right. And it was last year, and especially in California, there's a mass exodus in California. Right. New study just came out that uh, this is the 2020 was the first year in history that California had a net population loss. Right. Uh, so our interstate business, moving people out of the state is just exploded. Uh, it's really hard to keep up with. So uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to expand. However, it's tough. It's easy to want to expand when everything's great. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we don't want to over leverage ourselves and we don't want to over expand and, and stretch ourselves too thin, so right. to speak. Uh, but we do want to continue to expand our name, our brand. Um, the, more, the more business that we could expand the more that we could help the community. And that's kind of our, our like I said, our, it's something that's really important to me right now. Right. Two years ago, I had no idea about the, the need. Right. And, you know, it was all about, you know, just trying to develop a better legacy for my family um, and, and develop something that I could leave to my family. Uh, we didn't, you know, come from, from much. So I want to give to my kids, you know, as, as much as I possibly can. But two years ago when we found out about this, um, now we want to continue to grow into communities. Las Vegas might be one of the next pl pl places we're looking for. Sure. Or Dallas, Texas. Which nice. Is another location we're looking to open up. If visionaries want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? You could email me at chris at mentorsmovingandstorage.com. You could go to our website at www.mentorsmoving.com. Or you could give us a call at 661-325-MOVE. What was that number again? 661 
three two five move or six six eight three. And if you enjoy Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify. And when we come back, we're going to take a visionary question and visionary thought, a visionary concern, as it were, to something that is basic to most all businesses, but many that have a very hard time doing it. Toastmasters is a major sponsor of the Small Business Celebration program. In fact, Small Business Celebration started off as an advanced level Toastmasters project. Toastmasters is an organization that can help you learn how to communicate what you do for the people you serve. So join Toastmasters. Go to toastmasters.org forward slash find a club and join a club that can help you communicate what you do to the people you serve. Go to toastmasters.org forward slash find a club and learn how you can communicate more clearly to the people you serve. Go to toastmasters.org forward slash find a club today. We're here with Chris Ship, the co-owner of Mentors Moving, and our vision or question of the segment comes from Lacey who asks, when you built your website, what did you do to ensure that it passed the grunt test? So um, growing up and, and uh, early on in my business career, I realized, uh, reading all the books, I realized that if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> That's and, true, true. Uh, I've lived my life by that. And even, you know, getting through high school and college, I leaned on a lot of other people to help me out. So what I did is I went and I searched the best website builders for moving companies uh, specifically, Mover Search Marketing out of San Diego, uh, California. He, the owner actually ran a moving company for eight years, sold it, and then uh, went into developing websites. Right. So I would like to say that I'm a great website developer, and I and I <laughs> sat down and I came up with all the ideas. Take all the credit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't take all the credit, but that's not true. I was smart enough to find someone that's smarter than me to uh, do that work for me. Your website, which is D mentorsmoving.com, is that you have the ability that when somebody doesn't know what it is that they do, they take one look at your website and they know instantly what it is that they do, what you do, and how to get in touch with you. How have you parlayed that idea into all the major locations that you service and that you also have locations in, like you brought up? with Santa Rosa. Where did that idea come from and, and how did you integrate that into your, business, your website? Once again, Brian at Mover Search Marketing is very, very good at what he does and he knows all the Google SEO algorithms and what it is that Google likes to see right. from your website to be able to put it at like that top page. Uh, one of the big things is blogs. Mm. Uh, so what he does uh, is write a blog for me once, uh, I believe it's once a week or once every two weeks, writes a blog on things that's, um, that works with the moving industry, such mm. as the best neighborhoods in Kern County, uh, the population of Kern County, what to expect when moving to Kern County, um, the best churches in Kern County, because if someone's looking for a church, they're probably moving. Right, sure. And if someone's looking into, you know, the best neighborhoods in, Cal or in Kern County, they're probably gonna be moving. So uh, once again, I'd like to say that I'm the one who came up with all that, but sure. uh, it was Brian at Mover Search Marketing. So, you know, we parlayed that with our location in Santa Rosa and our location in Phoenix. And he sends me a, a report every month and just the number of keywords and the growth that we're having there is just off the charts, honestly. So I've mentioned it before on the show that, you know, if it were up to me, I'd live in a windowless room in a windowless office and have pizza delivered three times a day. And my human interaction is my cat. You too are an introvert in that regard. How did your, how did your introvertedness grow or grow from that you learned not to be the smartest person in the room? You know, growing up, I was very, very shy, especially at a at an early age. And um, one of my outlets was sports. Mm -hmm. Sports was my outlet where I. All, all that really mattered was how hard you worked. Right. And so I just went out and worked as hard as I can and, and just tried as hard as I can. And that was my outlet to be more um, outgoing and everything. And then ah. as, I, as I grew older and got out of high school, um, I joined Amway. Okay. And Amway, you know, obviously you can't be introverted or shy or, or closed off in Amway. You have to go talk to people and try complete to Complete strangers. Yeah, complete strangers <laughs> and try to talk them into joining your business. Right. You know, this internet business and, and everything. Um, 
However, I feel that that teaching and that coaching uh, through that was one of the most influential times in my life. Uh, I don't believe that I would be where I am today if it wasn't for that small two to three years of my life. Um, you know, I tell my wife and I tell my friends that if I had the opportunity to go back and go to college or do Amway, if it wasn't for the social aspect of college and the, and the fun and, and <laughs> sure. all and the, the sports, parties, yeah, sports and partying that you do in college, I think that the Amway uh, knowledge and experience would be better to set you up for business or something like that. You went through, you had your Amway experience, did well, did not so well, and then you and your partner bought a moving company. How much experience did you have in the world of moving when you bought the business? Well, we thought that we had a lot of experience because we moved ourselves three or four times. Oh, you've got a truck? Yeah. We're like, hey, we've <laughs> moved ourselves three or four times. We got this. What sure. could be so hard about it? <laughs> well, when you're moving your own stuff, if you scratch your chair, you're like, I don't really care about that chair anyways. Or right. you scratch your dining room table. It's like, yeah, it's mine. No big deal. Right. <laughs> when you do that to other people's furniture, they, they care a little bit more and they get a little bit more upset. A little so, upset, sure. A little bit. Yeah, so we didn't have very much of moving experience at all. How did the process grow and learn, or how did you dungon learn the process <laughs> of moving? Well, trial and error a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I said early on, it was just Jesse and I, my business partner, we'd go out and would move people, and we would damage things here and there, and we would not do things right, but... Uh, you know, in the long run, we'd always fix our mistakes with our customer, make sure our customer is happy. That was the number one priority. Right. Um, always have a great attitude when moving, even if we underbid a job and it's just Jesse and I for a 4,000 square foot house and it takes 18 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but a commitment's a commitment. A commitment's a commitment. We told you we'd have it done in one day and no matter how tired or how exhausted we were, we continue to push through and have a, have a great attitude. And then we realized that we can't be in business very long if we keep breaking stuff on right. every move. Sure. So we started uh, doing YouTube videos, uh, watching YouTube videos, practicing, and then we ended up buying a company uh, in 2013, I believe, called Excel Relocation Systems mm. in town. Okay. Uh, we ended up buying them out, and they had what I like to call real movers. <laughs> real and people who knew what they were doing. Who knew what they were doing, been in the industry for 10, 12 years, and moving is, it's a trade. Mm. It's, it's just like a welder, just like, you know, someone who, who has worked on something for 10,000 hours to become a professional right. about 10 years you could tell the difference between someone who's been doing it for a year someone who's been doing it 10 years they're very good at what they do and these guys were and they came into our life and were like oh my god like this is this is what <laughs> you're supposed to do we've been blowing it this whole time you mean you don't scratch the dining room table <laughs> you mean you pad every part of the furniture not just like the top and leave the bottom all, all exposed um, but then that was great. And then you combined our customer service that we, that we instill into our, into our employees and our attitude. My biggest thing is attitude is everything. Life is 10% uh, of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. So um, firm believer in that, when you combine that, that you know, and then real movers who taught us how to, how to actually move furniture, sure. uh, our business really started to grow after that. You did learn from your mistakes. You learned how to hire the right employees, put in the right, right. systems. Mm -hmm. But you also learned the difference between good debt and bad debt. And some people think there is no difference between good debt and bad debt. How did you learn the difference between the two? Growing up, I was always taught, you know, stay out of debt, save money. Pay cash for everything. Pay cash for everything. Right. Um, and when I started my business, I did that. I was scared of debt. I was scared of going out and getting a $30,000 loan to buy a truck. Mm. It'd be a used truck. Um, but you know, going out and getting that loan to buy a truck. So I'd save money for three, four years and then finally have enough cash to uh, buy that truck. And I feel like it really stunted our, our growth potential right. uh, because I was so scared to expand and to grow and uh, started reading books and started reading mainly R Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. Um, learning how to think about money and how to think about debt. Like you're saying, the difference between good debt and bad debt. Good debt is an asset, something that could provide you income, such as in my business, moving trucks, things of that nature. Bad debt would be um, a car that you drive yourself that's providing no income for you. Um, it's, it just takes money out of your account every single month where my moving trucks, 
theoretically most of the time put money into my account. <laughs> when, a, when a moving truck breaks down, it's bare minimum $3,000 to put back into Doesn't it. Doesn't matter what Doesn't it matter. is. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's $3,000 <laughs> to get it fixed. Ow, that hurts yeah. in the wallet. Yeah, not good. <laughs> not good. Now that you are growing and expanding even further, how have you taken the lessons that you've learned from the books that you've read and helped that grow your business to the next level? Going back to if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Uh, I knew early on that we needed to hire great teammates. And, um, you know, we say employees and everyone says employees. I don't like to think of it like that. I like to think of it as teammates. We're a team. And all I am is the head coach. You know, there, I, I have hired people uh, throughout the company that do things way better than I do. Right. And that's okay. And I love it. I would love for everyone to be able to do their jobs way better than I would do it. And we're almost there. Uh, and and just, just hiring a good team and focusing on that, taking care of our team as well, you know, providing benefits. We provide, uh, you know, health benefits for our employees who've been with us over a year, provide, uh, you know, matched IRA contributions for employees who've been uh, with us over a year, and just providing a great working environment of that camaraderie, a good teamwork and everything. That's allowed us to su succeed, and then also not being scared of debt, like we talked about earlier. Um, I listened to a podcast by Anthony Pompliano, and he said that if he were to go back 10 years ago, what would he tell himself? And he said, to go bigger. And I heard that two years ago, and I was like, well, why not? Let's just, you know, try to go bigger. And, you know, you can't think about failing. Right. You can't let that come into your mind. Obviously, you have, you know, fell safes if something does go wrong, you know, sure. than this. But to think about failing, it's, it's kind of not an option. So, um, just, just thinking, thinking bigger, to be honest. And you'll probably notice he has active employees working in the background as we're talking. And it's because it's a very tight labor market and they want to be here. And we'll be right back. The reason we're here with Chris Ship here at Mentors Moving is because of a Visioneer question that came from a Visioneer just like you. They wanted to find out more about this white hot moving industry that's encapsulated California. And that's because of a Visioneer that reached out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. So if you've got a question, you've got a thought, you want to learn more about an industry or a particular person or business, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today. We're here with Chris Ship, the co-owner of Mentors Moving, and our vision, your question in the segment comes from Jessica, who asks, we are in a highly competitive industry. What did you do to analyze what your competition is doing so you can figure out how you separate from them? Really, instead of figuring out what my competition was doing to separate myself from them, mm -hmm. what I found was more effective was to f get feedback from my customers. Oh. What does my customers think about Okay. Me? Because the competition, like I'm not too worried about them. Obviously, I keep an ear to the ground and, and know what they're doing. But I'm more focused on ourselves and our customers. Sure. So you know, we we call through our customers, do a, a courtesy call a few days after the move, see how everything went, get their feedback. We analyze that feedback on a weekly basis. You mean you don't wait for their bad review to come up on Yelp or something? Well, sometimes that comes up before we get to call them. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And, and then and then we're reactive. But I, I I would much rather be proactive as opposed to reactive. Got uh, it. You have a lot better results. And, uh, you know, just move forward with, with what our customers are saying to better ourselves. So we uh, found out recently that TVs have been being an issue. We've noticed oh. that we've been damaging TVs quite often. Why is that? One, I think that, you know, five years ago, a TV cost $4,000 and now that same TV costs $400 uh. and you can buy it at Walmart. So obviously the, the level of quality of the TV is lower right. and it just might be something that we're doing wrong ourselves. Um, it could have been something that we weren't training our employee, our team mm. uh, well enough for. So what we did is we went in and we brought all of our team together and went over a TV packing class. Okay. Did train them on how to pack TVs properly right. and our claims have gone down substantially since then. Right. And then also whenever we bring our employees in in, our teammates in. Um, I do a four-hour orientation with them. First thing, go over you know what the what we expect from them, uh, how we want to represent ourselves to the community, how we want to represent ourselves to the customer. Go over all of our standard operating procedures and put the expectation level. Oh yeah, for them. Okay. I I tell I tell um, our employees that 
this this is the best moving company in the world. Right. Whether it's true or not, we want to present ourselves like we are. And you are the most skilled mover in the world. And if, is, is, if you act like that, I'm a big believer in fake it till you make it, right? Okay, If you sure. just keep faking it and keep acting like that, eventually, even if it doesn't come 100% true and it only comes 90% true, right. you're still a, a lot better than you were if you didn't do that. And then after the orientation, we put them through a grueling eight hours each day, two day uh, training course on padding furniture over and over. They literally pad a dining room chair probably a hundred times. Wow. Pad a, pad a sofa 50 times. So. We're not just sending someone out to the house that have no experience, doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, it's not not like customer. you and your partner when you first started. Huh? <laughs> not like us when we first started. We learned from our mistake from that and uh, won't do that again. But this also sounds like this came from partially your personal growth. Because we mentioned in the last segment that you know, you're a high level introvert, as it were. <laughs> but this sounds like something that's this sounds more like a skill, people skills that you have learned along the way. How did you do that? Uh, reading books. Really? And yeah, re like reading what? books, 25 Ways to Win with People by John Maxwell. Okay. One of the most influential books I've read. And then the other one would be uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Those were the two main books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad got me reading again. I didn't read a book. I don't know if I could say I ever actually read a book in high school either, although I was supposed to. <laughs> right. Not that you recall anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Rich Dad Poor Dad was the first book I read, and that started my reading journey. Uh, so that was very influential. And then the 25 ways to influence people because um, leadership is essential to every business, and all leadership is is influence. Mm. So if you can't have influence over another human being or over anybody, um, I feel like you won't be successful. Um, I feel like your business won't grow and you won't be able to develop the team that uh, we've been fortunate enough to develop around here. What were one of the things out of that John C. Maxwell book that you went, aha, when it came to relating to people? All 25 of them are great. So okay. the one aha um, is kind of difficult, but I think that uh, give everyone a reputation to uphold. Really? How yeah. so? Uh, so if you let everyone know, like, uh, find, so it kind of couple, mind the gold of good intentions is okay. one of them in there. So you mind, the, if you see someone trying and they have good intentions, even though they may have made a mistake, they right. still had good intentions. Mm -hmm. So mind that, find something that someone is good at mm. and always give them the reputation to uphold. For example, hey, you're really good at padding sofas. This is my pad master when it comes to sofas. Let him pad the sofa and just keep telling them that. And then um, they have that reputation to uphold. Or, you know, my uh, vice president of sales, Keith Huff, I always tell him that he's the interstate moving guru. When it comes to moving out of state, <laughs> right? Keith is by far the best that there is. He is very good at, at uh, gathering all the details, making it really easy on the cu customer. That's a very, very stressful time. Moving is the fourth most stressful thing that you ever do in your life. Right. Yeah, death, taxes, divorce, and uh, moving. I'm moving. Yeah, it's on that level. And especially moving out of state across the country with your whole family. Right. Keith eases that burden on our customers, and, and he's very good. So that's why you know I give him a reputation to uphold, but he's very good at it. There's also another aspect to this as well, which is you read the book, and then you did it. Well, one, you're just wasting your time if you read a book and you're trying to read, uh, you know, self-development books and you never apply it. Right. Application is actually the hardest thing to do. Mm. Reading the book is easy. Actually making a dedicated time to apply it and focusing on it. Uh, another thing that John Maxwell talks about in 25 Ways to Win with People is creating a memory and revisiting it often mm. is a good way to, to uh, win with people. How so? So he says with uh, creating mem a memory and revisiting it often, it, uh -huh. you, it's not by accident. You force those memories. Ah. Like you actually get your friends together and go golfing. And then while you're going golfing, maybe throw a weird game in there or do something funny and then everyone remembers it and sure. then you revisit it often. So it's not by accident, you create those and you actually have to have your mindset that you are gonna create that. What gets you up every morning? and open your business? Um, a bunch of different factors. One would be the fear of being average. My whole okay. life growing up, that was kind of my biggest fear was being the average person on the basketball team mm. or the football team or just being average in general. And then now it's morphed into 
living an average life, having, you know, being an average father or husband to my family. Right. Um, I wake up every day with an intention to get better, to better myself, to be a good father, to be a good husband, to be a good mentor within my company, to be a good teammate within my company. Um, so I'd say what gets me up every morning is, is the fear of, fear of being average. If visionaries want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? You could email me at chris at mentorsmoving.com. You could give our office a call at 661-325-MOVE. That's 6683. Or you could go to our website at www.mentorsmoving.com. And how do they find you on social media? Facebook, we're all over Facebook. Um, I actually have three different ones on Facebook and it's our Phoenix branch, our uh, Santa Rosa branch and our Bakersfield branch. So I need to fix that. Uh, that's <laughs> one of the things you kind of get confused, but um, our Bakersfield branch is the mentors moving and then the and is spelt out, mentors moving and storage. On okay. Facebook. Thank you very much, Chris, for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. Thanks for having me. It was, it was a real big pleasure for me. Thank you. And we'll be right back with my final thoughts when we come right back. Toastmasters is a major sponsor of the Small Business Celebration program. In fact, Small Business Celebration started off as an advanced level Toastmasters project. Toastmasters is an organization that can help you learn how to communicate what you do for the people you serve. So join Toastmasters. Go to toastmasters.org forward slash find a club and join a club that can help you communicate what you do to the people you serve. Go to toastmasters.org forward slash find a club and learn how you can communicate more clearly to the people you serve. Go to toastmasters.org forward slash find a club today. Lecturing a bird on how to fly. The other day a friend of mine and I were having lunch at a local restaurant when a fan of Small Business Celebration came up to me and started talking about all the things that they learned on the show. Give value first. Confront your monsters. Persistence, persistence, persistence. Ugh. Later that evening, I went home and I told my wife about this and she smiled at me and she said, Michael, at least you have a fan. And she's right. When was the last time you found yourself lecturing a bird on how to fly? Be grateful, for you have a fan. Until next week, I hope you learned something with our guest this week with Chris Shipp here at Mentors Movie. And I hope that you've learned something from this episode that you can use to grow a strong and profitable business. And we'll see you next week. Exactly. Why is... And I'm not even going to worry about that question because you already answered it. So <laughs> there, you, there you go. So.